really look at this team and what can be done. Dale, what can we do with this team I'm glad to, you asked, to make a difference? Because I think there's one thing that we can do, but it's going to be a DDB exclusive. Doesn't it blow your mind? <laughs> The GDB crew has put together a little something-something on change.org where you can go and create a petition for anything, really. Well, we decided we would create a petition to Mr. Larry Dolan and just beg him to sell the Cleveland Indians. Sell. You can get on there and you can sign it and you can share it with your friends, share it with your mother, share it with your mother's friends. Change.org. We are the voice of the next generation in Cleveland Indians ownership and we're tired of the same old routine because we want to watch baseball in October. Don't you, Brett? Yes, sir. Don't you, Ramon? I don't know. All right. News meets biased and outspoken opinion. An entire complement of the game day crew here tonight. And this is the beginning of the Brown season. I know I say that every week, but this is the official beginning. We saw pads on, people hitting, in uniform, on the field, and we didn't look like crap. And McCoy didn't. <laughs> is there a problem here? Does it matter? <laughs> That's about it. Here's a hundred bucks. Just for you. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna need it. <laughs> it was it was it was very very hard to watch, and especially with all of the uh, excitement that we had built up, it was tough to watch. Another thing that was difficult is we have no linebackers anymore. We're down to the we scrub. We're all right. Yeah, we've lost about everybody. Uh, is the D dead? Now we've lost linebacker core. Hayden's gonna be out. Phil um, Taylor. Phil Taylor's gone. I mean, this it, this TJ this Ward. is our defense. Ward. Well, he missed half a season last year, and. Uh, it's bad. It's really bad. And this was the one thing that we kind of hang our head on and say, we can kind of do this. We can at least kind of stop people, but not anymore, maybe. Nope. So is the D dead? That's that's a question. Um, is it time to go and get a free agent linebacker? Now, I, I know that um, definitely um, uh, Gokong's gone for the year. And the other two, you know. Suspension. For Fujita. Fujita, yeah. The other two, yeah. But that's uh, uh, that's going to be four games. So that's at least he's coming back. And then and then Jackson, Paul Jackson, who is our captain and the guy that runs our defense, he's got the the, the speaker in his, in his helmet. He gets the plays. He's not going to. He's hurt now. So is it time to go out and get a free agent? Do we need to? Is that a waste? Do we stick with the young guys we got? All rookies. One of them a walk on though. They speak highly of them. Um, so we'll look at that a little bit. Uh, Josh Gordon. We. I think everybody in Cleveland was real happy about that pick, and most people were. We gave up a second-round pick next year to get the guy, and he has a ton of talent, but a potential attitude problem as well. Coaches aren't happy with him. He hasn't looked good. He's, gotten, he's been pulled off of, uh, of drills, and he's basically showing the signs of the same attitude problems that he that he was uh, known for back in college. So that could be a problem. Uh, we'll look at that. We'll hit, hit the NFL, and part of the NFL is one of the most exciting times of the year completely, and that is fantasy football. And we have the return of the fantasy Oh, family. yeah! It's time, baby. Run this Wait. year by Macho Man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a great, long, um, and, and really, really detailed fantasy factor. Dale's going to set it I up. Took notes. We break oh. it down, baby. We break, break it down. It down. 
Game Day Battle is brought to you by Bamboozles Restaurant and Lounge in Parma. They have the best drink specials anywhere. Seriously, buy one. Get one free drinks. How often do you hear of it? You don't. They do it twice a week. Billy's mom makes the pasta sauce all the time. And the burgers, you simply won't find a better one. Check them out. Bamboozles.com. Again, bamboozles.com. When you go there, tell them GDB sent you. This is a new GDB pet. We're supposed to dog sit for one week. That's turned into a month and a half, and my fiance won't talk to me. Yep. And uh, I think they're pretty much your pets now. If you drink beer, everything will be forgiven. Come on. <laughs> your mom watches the show, doesn't she? This is my new segment. <laughs> well, the dog beer yep, drinker. It's Tiki. I like it. <laughs> beer drinking dog. All right, so is the Browns' defense dead? Is is the are, are the injuries that we've suffered in just the very first game of preseason, plus the suspension, uh, two suspensions actually between Vegeta and Hayden, is that enough to kill this defense? And, and Dale, you mentioned Phil Taylor as well. Uh, it's all a concern. It's all a problem. Or is it the system itself that really has allowed these guys who are athletic guys to sort of to, to sort of become? the dominant players that they've been able to become last year. Do you think that perhaps Dick Geron's defense is what has, or his scheme, I guess, is what has made this uh, made this happen? Uh, Dale, looking, me. Looking, at, looking at who we have, who we've lost, and what we've got left to work with, are you are you calling the defense dead at least for the first half of the season? We're going to lose two of, the, two of them for at least the first four games and the rest maybe longer. I'm chalking up the whole fucking season right now, dude. <laughs> Sorry to say it. I was optimistic for a shroud of three weeks when the draft hype hit me and I saw Whedon hitting clay pigeons and Trent Richardson looking like a beast. Well, now... We all know Trent Richardson had a clean-up knee surgery, or that's just what they called it. Who knows what it really was? I mean, he's, he's going for knee surgery four weeks before the season starts. That's, yep. that's not a good thing. Brandon Whedon coming out. Yeah, he hasn't played a game in a while. He looked really rusty. Uh, maybe a questionable pick right there, but then Colt McCoy comes out, goes six for eight. And then we had another guy come out. Who was that? Thaddeus Lewis. Thaddeus Lewis come out looking good. Seneca yards. Wallace throwing the game winner. Brandon Whedon was the fourth quarterback on the list from our starters right there. So, yeah, it's early, but I'm telling you, Mike, you nailed it. Our defense is shot. All because <laughs> Joe Hayden wants to pop some Adderall. Hope it was <laughs> worth it, man. You can kiss him goodbye for four games, Vegeta for four games, injury after injury after injury. You, you nailed it. Our defense was our shining spot. We were hoping to build on that. If we could solidify that and stop that run game to have to go with the passing game, the, the passing defense that we had last year, I was expecting big things, but change of ownership, and it's already just it seems like a clusterfuck. Relationships with players from the top down are going to be tainted. Who knows what guys are still going to be here when uh, when uh, Haslam actually gets the full, full run of the team in October. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Not to mention... Not to mention uh -oh. that the Browns have the number one hardest strength of schedule. And that's something that you guys hear me say over and over again because it's very, very important. You'll hear a lot about it in the fantasy factor. But, I mean, we are playing the hardest schedule in the NFL, and our defense is going to be running third-string guys. And it's just uh, – it, it's tough to be optimistic right now. You're not seeing any hope for a miracle. These guys step up, they prove themselves, and suddenly we've got this magical defense. I, I saw an article on NFL.com about three weeks ago that was projecting uh, records for teams, and they had the Browns going 2-14, and 14, and I said, no fucking way is that possible. Now, <laughs> it's possible. they might have nailed it right on the head. Was dude. this, Was I mean, they knew Fajita, obviously. Was this before Hayden and before the injuries? Yes, obviously it was before, before the injuries. All, it was before all that nonsense, because it was a couple weeks ago. So we now, even knew about a second So if they did it now, they'd have us losing. They probably would. We could be we could be facing the 0-16 blunder. I'm telling you, we are playing tough fucking teams this year. We can't, we can't do that. Let that, alone our division. Our it, division is tough. Because uh, with, with uh, my... Uh, those that I know that are Tigers fans in Detroit, the one thing I got on them is both of their sports teams have the records for the biggest losing uh, stretch. The Tigers do and the Lions do. Cleveland. So we we're cannot. Not we're not Detroit. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to. 
What's up all you GDB fans? Welcome back to my favorite segment. I never feel more at home than when I'm on the Fantasy Factor with you guys here on Game Day Battle. Time to break out this 2012 NFL season and dissect all the little nuances and see who's going to put together your Pro Bowl team and hopefully get you that Fantasy Football Championship. Let's roll them. I got the top 10 at each position, quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end, because those are the ones that matter, all right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the quarterback because I feel it's the most important position, especially if you get six points for a touchdown, you're gonna wanna take quarterbacks early. They still don't seem to go, but if you can grab them, definitely try to do it early. Number one, I got Aaron Rodgers, without a doubt. He's the best in the game. Number two, Tom Brady. Now, you might not agree with me. You might think Drew Brees should be here, but I'm going on the strength of schedule. T uh, New England Patriots have the easiest schedule in the NFL this year. Tom Brady's going to throw for 40 touchdowns, maybe 5,000 yards. You definitely want him on your team. Drew Brees takes the notch down because he doesn't have his coach this year. Sean Payton, he's kind of the mastermind for that offense, so it might cost them a little bit. That's the only reason why Drew Brees slipped down to number three. Number four, I got Matthew Stafford. Easily capable of 5,000 yards, maybe 30 30 touchdowns. Right below there, Eli Manning. He really came out last year and proved that he could be an elite quarterback if he can keep his interception number down. This might just be my Giants bias, but I really think with those weapons, Hakeem Nix and Victor Cruz and the guys that they picked up through free agency in the draft, Eli Manning could have a huge year. I'm going to stay in the NFC East at number six, Michael Vick. He's the guy that could throw you five touchdowns, get you 300 yards in a game. Definitely big play mentality right there. Number seven, Cam Newton. Love what he can do. Can't wait to see what else he can do. He's a big fantasy value trying grab him. Matt Ryan out in Atlanta, Julio Jones and Roddy White, both of those guys could catch 100 balls this year. New offensive coordinator in Atlanta, they're going to be airing the ball out. Try and sneak Matt Ryan late if you can. Number 10, Peyton Manning might be overvalued, but if he shows anything of what he's done in the past three years, he's definitely worth a late round selection and you get some value. You can snag Peyton in the fourth or fifth round. Uh, to round it out, I got a two-way tie for 10. Phillip Rivers and Jake Cutler, those guys are both, uh, you know, uh, statistically sound, and they'll, they'll both have a subpar year. Uh, right around 10 is where I like those guys. Guys to avoid at the quarterback position. Anyone that I didn't mention, you want to get a top 10 quarterback. It's key to your success. You don't want to be trying to stick in Alex Smith or Joe Flacco or any of these other bums and keeping your fingers crossed and hope that they can produce because chances are they won't. There's guys out there that are elite at the position. Make sure that you have one. All right, running backs. This is where it gets tough because it's slim pickings this year. The three-headed running back has taken over the NFL. Some teams are even running four running backs right now. It's just There's no superstar power. Anybody can run the ball. Off. And if a guy's having 300 carries a year, chances are he's not going to play 16 games. So, let's run him off. Number one position, LaShawn McCoy. 17 touchdowns last year. That's more than Ray Rice and Arian Foster put together. Need I say more? Number two, Ray Rice. Feature back in Baltimore. Going to be the only guy getting carries. You definitely want to pick him up, especially if you're in a PPR league. Number three, Arian Foster. Goes without saying. Number four, Chris Johnson. High value. Catches the ball. That's what you want in a PPR league. A guy that will get you 50 receptions and still rush for 100 yards. Maybe get you two or three scores. At number five, Maurice Jones-Drew. The guy won the rushing title. Don't like the fact that he's not in camp scare you. You know this thing's always happen. They'll get everything worked out. He'll be on the field for Jacksonville. Number six, Darren McFadden. I know it's risky coming back off the injury, but the guy has shown his speed is miraculous, and he can really just tear up the field and take over the game. I love Darren McFadden. Michael Turner out in Atlanta at number seven. Darren Sproles caught 86 balls last year, most amongst any running backs. One of the key positions, I like sneaking Darren Sproles late second, early third round. Number nine, Fred Jackson. Great pickup if he can play healthy. And at number 10, I got a four-way tie for you from all the injury mysteries, and that's Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, Trent Richardson, and Ryan Matthews. All those guys messing with knees, collarbones, surgeries, ACLs, MCLs, WTFs. Will they work out? Who knows? But take those guys before you look at those four injury-prone dudes right there. Okay, some guys to avoid at the running back position. I'm dropping Matt Forte's stock. They signed Michael Bush out there in Chicago. He's going to be stealing goal line carries. 
Uh, Matt Forte will not be on my fantasy team. You should keep him away off yours. Also, all San Francisco running backs are taking a hit. Stay away from Frank Gore because they got Brandon Jacobs, Kendall Hunter. They drafted LaMichael James. There's just not enough to go around out there in San Francisco. So while Frank Gore might seem appealing, I advise you to stay away from him. I think there's more value out there. Speaking of value, late round running back selections. Here we go. Try and sneak Doug Martin, rookie for Tampa Bay. They're comparing this guy to Ray Rice, LaShawn McCoy. He's a receiving threat. Could put up huge numbers. Isaac Redman for the Steelers. Uh, Mendon Hall is on the physically unable to perform list. The Steelers just bolstered their offensive line through the draft. I really think they're going to have one of the best offensive lines in the league. Ben Roethlisberger's banged up. That means Pittsburgh's going to do what they do, and that's ground and pound football. Try and grab Isaac Redman. Also, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, New City, out there in Cincinnati. This guy is a 25 down back, and he will eat up yards, and Cincinnati's not passing like New England does, so see if you can grab Green Ellis late. Also, Ronnie Hillman out there in Denver. He's going to sneak through. Willis McGay, he is not going to make it through the entire season, as a starting Denver Browns running uh, Denver Broncos running back, so I like Ronnie Hillman late as well. All right, we're keeping it rolling. Hot fantasy football, baby. Wide receiver position. Number one, Megatron. Come on, Calvin Johnson, 16 touchdowns. If you're taking a wide receiver first, it better be Calvin Johnson. Number two, don't let me scare you, but Wes Welker. I mean, come on, Tom Brady's throwing to him. He catches 100 balls every year, and again, strength of schedule. The Patriots are playing bums all year long. They're gonna run. They're gonna run rampant in the statistical categories. Number three, Larry Fitzgerald, easy. Four, Andre Johnson. Number five, Brandon Marshall, back with Jay Cutler in Chicago. I love it. This guy's. He would catch 20 balls when Cutler was throwing in a game. So just look for a huge year. Chicago's gonna be all over offensively. Uh, I really like Brandon Marshall. Number six, two-way tie, Roddy White and Julio Jones. Like I said earlier, new offensive coordinator. Both of those guys could catch 100. Balls. Balls. One is just as good as the other, in my opinion. Number seven, Jordy Nelson. Forget Greg Jennings. Jordy Nelson caught 15 touchdowns last year. That's one less than Calvin Johnson. Try and sneak him in one of the early rounds. You'll be glad you did. Number eight, Giants receivers. Akeem Nix, Victor Cruz. I feel one is just as good as the other. Nine spot, another tandem. Eric Decker, Demetrius Thomas. Got Peyton Manning's new target. These guys are going to be elite. They're going to be the new Reggie Wayne and Anthony Gonzalez and Pierre Thomas and all those guys that Peyton Manning made stars. If you can try to grab those guys late, definitely get your hands on them. Number 10, uh, Des Bryant. I just kind of threw him on there because he's having a really good camp with Dallas when he's not beating up his mother and all that kind of stuff. If he can stay on the field, I think he'll be solid and definitely take over the number one wide receiver spot out there in Dallas. Okay, that's the top 10. Value wide receivers, okay? Mike Williams out in Tampa Bay. He had a bad year last year, went from 12 touchdowns down to six, but they got Vincent Jackson. Tampa Bay has a decent running back threat between Doug Martin and LeGarrette Blount and Josh Freeman could step up now that he's got Vincent Jackson on the other side taking some of the pressure off Mike Williams, so I look for him to bounce back. Antonio Brown, Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Wallace isn't in camp. Steelers just inked this guy to a five-year, $45 million deal. They didn't sign him because they're not going to pass him the ball. Antonio Brown was a big payoff for guys who had him last year. I'm looking for even more from him this year, so see if you can grab him. Also, Pierre Garçon, another guy in a new city. This guy made big plays when Curtis Painter was his quarterback. Wait you see what he does when RG3 gets in the ball on these screens. RG3 has been just targeting Garcon. They had this great chemistry, and I'm looking for big things from here this year. Also, another value, Lance Moore out in... Uh Lance Moore, New Orleans. Thank you. Robert Meacham is out. Drew Brees, someone else is going to be catching those balls. Lance Moore, he's a guy that can catch 10 and score two. See if you can grab him late. I've seen him in the 10th to 12th round. All right, tight ends, where we finish up. I'm going to do a two-way tie between Jimmy Graham and Rob Gronkowski. Gronk caught 17 touchdowns last year to Jimmy Graham's 11, but Jimmy Graham caught 100 balls. I figure one is just as good as the other. Some people have been taking tight ends as early as the first round, and I say why not? If those wide receivers start to go, get a guy that's going to catch you 100 balls and 10 touchdowns. Number three, Antonio Gates. He's back. He's healthy. Phillip Rivers is down a star wide receiver, so that's just more targets for Antonio Gates. Number four, Vernon 
Davis. You saw what he did for the uh, throughout the playoffs for the Niners last year. Look for him to do more with all those wide receivers that they're going to be spreading all over the place. It's going to be easy pickings. Number five, Jason Witten. Number six, ben, Brandon Pettigrew. Number seven, Jermichael Finley. I got him low. He was a big guy. He was supposed to do lots of things, catch all these touchdowns from Aaron Rodgers. It hasn't happened. He's had one or two games. Jermichael Finley slipped on my list. Number eight, surprise for you, Jacob Tame. Who does Peyton Manning love? His tight ends. We saw Dallas Clark run wild for five years. We saw Jake Tame come in and run wild when Dallas Clark was out. It doesn't matter who's in there. Peyton Manning passes it to his tight end. See if you can grab him. Number nine, Fred Davis out in uh, Washington. And number ten, Aaron Hernandez. He may be a number two tight end for uh, the Patriots, but he caught more touchdowns than most number one tight ends in the league. So that's going to wrap out the tight end position. No, no help on kickers. Defenses are hit or miss. I like San Francisco, Houston, Pittsburgh and the Giants as top four Ds this year. And that's it. If you guys got any questions, you can hit me up, DST at GameDayBattle.com, or you can hit me up right on the Facebook page. Fantasy football is back. It's my favorite time of year. Get out there, do some mock drafts, be ready to roll. You don't want to be caught not knowing your shit when it's time to go on draft day. So we got plenty of time. Get out there with old DST. I'll help you get a winner, guys. We'll see you next time. Uh, Ramon, um... Dale, Dale had mentioned uh, the whole Adderall thing with Hayden. Hayden has been, has been a standout. We've all kind of coalesced around Hayden, and he's embraced his community. And for a lot of reasons, he's sort of been the, the one guy that we could we could really get get behind. You know, I mean, if everything everything else fell apart, we got rid of everybody else. That's the one guy. Do you think it was helped by this Adderall? I mean, he didn't have a prescription for it. He probably didn't take it once. He's probably been taking it for years, and he got he got uh, busted. He ain't gonna take it again. Unless he's really dumb, do you think this player may be gone? At least the player we knew. No, nah, I don't think so. He's talented, um, but is it final? Did they already say four games? I, I think I it's still think up in the air. I, see, but I it's, think it's, it's still up in the air, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you know, we still have, they're going to keep it under ropes. He might not even get suspended till next year. You know how that shit works. You're an NFL player. You know, we're real close into the season now. You know, how long did it take Pac-Man to get suspended? You know, they waited a while, and then they suspended him later. That was, that's, that was a different NFL, though. But this is this it's, today. You know saying, but that's just an very... example of how some of these things work when you're in that high position like that, you know. These guys get away with a lot of stuff and still be back on that field, you know, the following week. So. I mean, Adderall's rough stuff. It's not like a Percocet, dude. If you get caught with an Adderall, it's a felony. Each pill is a felony. Okay, so you if take you have unprescribed Adderall. It's serious. But it, so is HGH and so does all this other stuff. It's, well, it's, apparently not in the NFL. HGH you know, is yeah, 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 yeah. the, the same thing. You know what I mean? If that, they take that to for their advantage. It's what they need, but I don't yeah. think he needs that. You know, well, I think he's just a talent it, in general. I mean, it's, it's just really the thing about. I mean, he was prescribed it. He just didn't put on the list of prescription, you know, drugs he's taking. No, I don't. Think I mean, it's, he, I don't it's, think he had a prescription. No, he did. I saw. I, saw, I read it somewhere. Or really, a Doctor Mexico? But um, <laughs> yeah, he had a same doctor. Got, got, <laughs> like, I mean, same it's, doctor it's, Michael. Had. It's for ADHD. I mean, it's not like. I mean, that's a pretty serious, serious, you know, medical condition. ADHD. What? ADHD? Huh? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, well, lo and looking at the first four games, if we assume that that is the suspension period for Hayden and Vegeta, right? Vegeta's four games, or is he six? Four. four. Okay. So the first four games, uh, this secondary is going up against uh, Michael Vick, Andy Dalton, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and uh, Joe Flacco. So it's not it's not the stellar group of quarterbacks. That I don't you know would, about Ryan Fitzpatrick, dude. Well, <laughs> but it, but it's not it's not it's not it's not a bunch of slouches either. And they're teams that throw. They're teams that throw a lot. Fitzpatrick smart. Fitzpatrick can play, but he's Just not a the big quarterback. No, that's watch the guy play. That's watch. exactly why. <laughs> well, that's why we got Harvard. <laughs> So is it maybe is it maybe time to look at free agency? There are a number of, of veteran linebackers in free agency. Of course, I'm not saying go out and get a rookie because that doesn't make any sense, or go get a one-year or two-year guy. Is it time to go out and get a six or seven-year veteran that can come in and be Dequell if Dequell can't play? Who's out there? Do you have well, anybody? Nobody that we've ever heard of. But that's not the point. The guys that have played for six to seven years in the league might have a little bit better ability to run the defense than these two guys we drafted low and then one guy that walked on. Three ball. I'm just, well, you... 
I don't know. He's a Buckeyes linebacker coach, isn't he? Rabel? Yeah, he is now. Call him up. <laughs> Bring him out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> he so, wants to score touchdowns, too. <laughs> yeah. I think Goldberg used to play linebacker. <laughs> he hasn't wrestled in a while. See what he's or doing. Or The Rock. The Rock. Lesnar. Come on. Are we building a team now from uh, from MMA? <laughs> but WWE more like it. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Did you should have you watched film on uh, on uh, Jerry Rice and the work that he put in just to get where he was at? And these guys are just going by just talent. We'll put it this and way. No hard work. How, how old is Jerry Rice? 95, 110? No, I'd, I'd, I'd sign him right now. I would sign him today. Oh, yeah. And no matter yeah, how I mean, old he is. He won Dance with the Stars, too, so you know <laughs> he's still, <laughs> he's still he, light he, on his feet. Wow. He can move. He can move. So I, I, that's what I think. Do you guys it. watch Dancing with the Stars? Is that how you know this? No. Because that's scary. Yeah. No. They watch, it, to, they watch it together. Come on. You, you, watch, you, watch, you can watch Sports Center and be like, hey, look, Jerry Rice from the Mirror Bowl. Yeah, yeah, use that line. That, yeah. that, that sounds believable, guys. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Caught us. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I just want to dance. <laughs> Are we prepared? Yeah. Are we ready? I'm born ready. I'm no, ready. maybe not. I gotta take a piss. I was born ready in 1931. <laughs> Okay, so we have a small amount of time left. We're going to use that time to raise our beer to a, God, they're annoying, to a uh, person we love, a person we hate, a situation we like, a situation we can't stand. Sometimes we just raise our beer and we start talking until somebody shuts us up. And uh, that's most often how it happens. So tonight, I am going to start off with Dale Shane's Tercy. Whoa! Bring it on! Curveball! I'm going to raise my beer to The Dark Knight Rises. Ooh. Totally out of nowhere, I know. I've never raised my beer to a movie before, but today I am. I just saw it yesterday. It was epic. A great end of the trilogy. Kind of left it open for uh, possibly another one, even though both uh, the director and Christian Bale said that they won't be back, but left it open for uh, another possible sequel. I won't even try to spoil it for you guys. You're just going to have to check that out for yourselves. But uh, another trilogy uh, in our lifetime, a great movie trilogy coming to an end, and the next one is upon us. I don't know if you guys are big uh, Lord of the Rings fans, but they're making The Hobbit, and they're turning, Peter Jackson just said today that they're going to turn that into a trilogy as well. So one ends, another one begins, some great more movies movies to uh, look forward to and yeah man the dark knight I was in the hobbit in high school definitely check that out i think you were the hobbit in high school <laughs> Schmeagle. No, i was i was a great goblin in, in high school you could be a goblin <laughs> <laughs> you could be the fat hobbit what why did you put the fat word in there well cuz they called him the fat hobbit it's kind of mean well I'm pushing <laughs> some beer out for you, Mike. I'm sorry, Brad. I'm sorry, Brad. No. I love you, though. Go see that movie. I, I, Seriously. I will. I'm, awesome. I'm going to see it. Go see it. I'm just going to, like, if, I don't know, there's any sort of, like, uh, tear gas. I'm just going to, like, duck. All right. I wasn't going to say it, but since you brought it up, I got another another thing I want to raise my beer to because Mike went How long are you going to be? Can I get Real quick. Ar- in regards to this whole Colorado shooting massacre, I just want to say that I feel for the families th- it's a, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy. You never want to see anything like that happen. But on the other side of this, I don't want this to be a reason for our government to go and make all these new laws and try to take our put all these limits on guns and you know that's what we are America you know that's it's part of our it's part of our upbringing, our country is our weapons and you know guns don't kill people. Crazy people, people yep. kill people, and, and, that, and that's how that goes. Just because one thing happens doesn't mean that there's need for massive upheaval of the whole system to try to change all these laws just because one guy had a bad weekend and went out and did a, a horrendous crime. I'm not trying to downplay what he did or, or try even try to mention for a split second that I agree with, with anything that that fucking lunatic did, but you just can't. You just gotta bear down and still have faith in people, and just try to trust that you know the majority of people are not like that. Not go and try to revamp and pass all these new laws and all that bullshit. I think I've made it pretty clear how I feel about it, and it's a shame. Oh, where you said that? It's a big shame. Well, so now Dale has completely brought the room down. Yep. Sorry, guys. I wasn't gonna go there. But you, I, I, I you brought did. you into it. Yeah. I brought you into it. Yeah, you, you you kind of just like you know you open the door and I had to, I had to dive through. Uh, you did. I you dove. You dove way down. 
Ramon Torres, you gotta, you gotta bring the room up. Bring us up. Um, no. Nah, I'm not gonna bring the room up. Oh my God, I'm Brett. Keep, uh, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna stay on um, this whole Browns thing with the team being sold. I'm all for it, man. Get rid of these piece of shit ass owners who don't care nothing about making a fucking buck and doesn't care, and they don't care about the fans. People who go out there and waste their hard earned money, money on these teams and buying their merchandise and buying tickets and buying food at these venues and they don't give two shits but just go out there and just say here you're gonna fucking eat this sandwich and you're gonna fucking like it no matter if it's 15 bucks or five bucks and I'm tired of it and I'm glad to see something change around here. He didn't want it, he got it from his dad. Give it to somebody who has some football background. I'm all for it. One down, one to fucking go with that bum ass Dolan too. I'm just waiting.